So there is absolutely nothing here to tow and I need to tow something. So, I, so I'm going to uh, install this bracket that I found and see if we can uh, tow stuff <laughs> once I set it up. Shouldn't be that hard actually. Comes with a bag of stuff and instructions. They're not great, but they do exist. It looks like all the parts are there. I had a quick look at last night. So let's get started and see what happens. So here are the instructions uh, that come with it. It tells you the tools you need. Right here, wrenches. Uh, the fastener kit, which it comes with, the bag full of nuts and bolts. Uh, that seemed to complete. The instructions are kind of uh, crazily laid out. Like here, you just jump to step three. They're illustrating step three. All the steps are down here. This is telling you what you should be having in the in the bag, so you can pull it out, and that's a nice clear list of what you what they want you to have. Uh, but here, the instructions are, and they're very very small. So what I kind of suggest you do is take a picture of it with your camera. Then you can, uh, you know, pinch to zoom and, and, and enlarge it so you can actually read it because this is quite fine. Be careful not to allow muffler to fall under its own weight. So you want to support it and have these blocks of wood. Those are, I'm going to use to help prop up the end of the exhaust so that it doesn't just hang from the front and bend or whatever. It's not necessary. You just need to lower it down. You don't need to remove it and you certainly don't want to break it. So. This gives it a little bit of, you know, it'll drop a four or five inches, whatever it is, and then the, those will hold it up while I uh, get the job done. Also, they can help hold up the actual tow bar assembly uh, bracket that I'm adding to the car. Because, um, again, I have one by myself, so I'll put, you know, support it with that on one end while I'm trying to bolt the other type of thing. And let me do a quick review of the tools. This is after the fact, and these are what I ended up using, which I think is a better way of showing you what you need, <laughs> because I did use it, in fact, instead of wondering about it later. First of all, follow the directions. The directions are confusing. In some of this video, I'm, I'm going to be reading it actually out loud as I try to make sense of it myself. But if you follow the directions, you'll get all the parts where they belong, and you won't end up with any extra parts. Wondering. How am I going to get this in that hole? How come there's an extra whatever that doesn't have anywhere to go? Or whatever your questions are. If you bother to read the directions, or just follow along with me if you want, you'll get everything put, put where it belongs. But anyways, one of the two, you're going to uh, take off and remove three of the exhaust hangers. Okay, two of them look like these. So the hangers are here. One thing I want to mention, which I did mention in the video actually, that's holding it in one end. But there's also this other little flange which you can't really see. And when you have it all the way across, I'll explain it in the video that, you know, be careful you don't get your pry bar behind this. Because then you're pushing, you're not pushing against the rubber which you're trying to clear and kick off. You're just pushing against this which is welded onto this part. You're not going to break that loose. And to do that, you're going to need some one of these. I use this one. This one Hank came in handy as well. I did break loose with both of these, using both of these. One was probably enough, or one with a large screwdriver might be enough. But you're going to need something like that, no question about it. To break loose the original bolts that hung on those hangers, I used this uh, half inch. I used everything half inch, first of all. And this is an extendable ratchet from Hazit. You uh, turn this, and it slides out. I could do a whole review on this thing, which maybe I will. Uh, oops, got a little bit dirtier beat up there because I was using it and you'll see me breaking breaking the bolts free with this thing uh, Definitely needed it definitely came in handy. They do recommend having a uh, Extension they specifically mentioned that This is not a hazard. This is called a Stavella It's just a German brand what I like about these guys is that um, they have this quick release which is actually handy because it's also a lock. The thing about quick releases is that they're also locks. So when you get your socket on there, in my case, underneath the car, or whatever you're trying to do, and then you you sometimes the socket and the bolt or the fastener jam together. And then when you pull, this comes loose if it doesn't have the, the lock. 
it just separates. I've had this many, many times where the, the spark plug is down in, in the engine and the spark plug socket is on it and then this pulls off because I'm trying to, you know, I'm done. I put it on, tighten it down, pull this back and then the, the extension comes back without the socket. That's still on, squeezing onto the spark plug. So then I got into something like this. And, uh, you know, it, it is a lot easier and a, and a lot uh, more secure. So that's a good thing to have. Now, you don't have to have the lock, of course, but you, you, the extension does help you because the, the frame that you're actually bolting all this onto is just a slightly out of reach. And, and a little bit of an extension like this, a 5-inch extension or whatever you call it, uh, will make a difference. That'll help clear the bottom so you can, your, your ratchet can swing. They recommend uh, four different kinds of sockets. They recommend the 19 and the 18. They also say these other ones, uh, SAEs, three quarter, and I think the other one, I forgot what it was, I just put another one here. These are simply like the SAE equivalents of 18 and 19s or vice versa, however you want to look at it. So they're saying you can do it with either one. You don't actually need four, so four different size sockets. It's one or the other, one pair or the other pair kind of thing. Like if you don't have metric, let's pretend. Okay, you don't need metric. You can do it with the SAEs. You just get those sizes instead. And then the last thing that they don't 100% mention, although they mention the rate, the ratings, is this torque wrench. Uh, this is, of course, a half inch again. This is the, mine. This one, half inch one, goes from uh, 50 foot pounds to 250. And the 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 uh, foot poundage you're going to use is going to be 68 and 75. So you need something that'll have that in the range, whatever, whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be old snap on like this one. It's just what I had. But uh, if you have a newer one, <laughs> different brand, whatever, I don't care. As long as it's, the range ends up with you have a 68 and a 75 somewhere in the middle, then it'll be perfect. Since I was doing it with the car down on the ground, you uh, want things that are short. I got a little can of WD-40. I already had this. But I also had a bigger bottle. I realized, oh, the little one's going to fit underneath easier. You know, you, you, like when it, that's the thing about prying trying to get these uh, hangers off, these isolators, is that there's not a lot of room because the ground is right there. So you don't have a lot of places to move and maneuver. You're on your back, blah, blah, blah. It's not that easy. Now, you'll also notice that there are a few guest stars in the video. I did uh, use this uh, speeder wrench and the universal joint there to help remove the bolts a little quicker rather than just ratcheting, ratcheting, ratcheting. In other videos I saw people d demonstrating you know how to install this hitch. They had professional mechanics usually doing it or people who are way more professional than me and they had um, either high, um, pneumatic you know air guns, air, air ratchets or battery operated ratchets that kind of thing. I don't have anything like that so I used it, I did the old-fashioned way elbow grease and uh, leverage and this nice speeder wrench worked great now unfortunately I have to say there is a, a guest star here that was not planned and not intended which is the tap and die set because the uh, bolts that they sent me actually were not good they had damage inside both the, on the bolt and inside the nut threads and I had to rethread it. So luckily, I had this old set from decades ago. Literally, it's like 30, 40 years old at least, uh, which I talk about in the video. But uh, the point is, you should not have to have this. You should not have to have this. The bolts and nuts they send you should work correctly, straight out, you know, as it comes, obviously. They're giving you the parts. What's the point of giving you something that needs to be fixed? But mine did need to be worked on. Luckily, I had this old set that it, that actually worked. It had the correct uh, tap and die to uh, rethread the nut and bolt. It was actually two pairs, the two nuts and two bolts of the same size. But you need two. They they give you two each, and all of them, all four pieces were uh, messed up. So that's not just an accidental. You know, they make a million of these things type of thing 
once in a while was a, is a defective one. That's fine. Uh, but when there's four in one package, then I start to think there might be something wrong with, with how they're doing it. But anyway, I'm just letting you know what happened. This is just an old speeder wrench and the universal joint. I think the universal joint is like from the 50s or 40s. The, the speed wrench, I believe, is from 1950, but I'm not sure. To be honest, I, I forgot the I don't I don't know the code by heart. Um, and I believe the uh, universal joint is uh, from 1940s or 50s as well. But they came in handy. It really worked. The, the universal joint helps get things that you know. It's it, everything is sort of slightly at an angle. So you want to have. Uh, some flexibility in your in how you approach it and that's what that's for it worked great so there's my extra little pieces that had to be used and you'll see it in, in action there okay I'm gonna get under there and we'll see I gotta start by propping it up but I'll, I'll do what I do and I'll, push, I'll um, come back to you when it's done show you what two blocks but what I want to show you is this is the tailpipe uh, the exhaust pipes they kind of go up at an angle so the farther back you get the higher they go so if you have blocks near the near this uh, center Y part where they continue straight down um, this is the lowest part so you can decide how high I want the clearance if I want it to drop further I can move the block back or you know towards the, the higher part of the pipe and then it'll allow it to drop further if you need more uh, room on, on the on the end when you're trying to remove the bracket, which I'm going to get to in a second. So I'm just trying to show you how I did it with having a couple blocks. You could just have one block, but then you can't maneuver, you can't adjust it. Oh, or I guess you could by sliding it further down. I just got back from having a little lunch. So I took my gloves off and I don't have any more. But uh, let's see if I can get this thing off here. I was going to pry bar, but there's nothing to pry against, that's the problem here. I'm not sure where the leverage is coming from. <sighs> Laying your back is doesn't make it easier, but it's still, it's got to be a way to pry this thing. That's where it went. Just pushing it on the center with this, using the pry bar as a flat thing to push on with my hand and pulling with my fingers, sort of help pull it off. Sort of, maybe. If it comes off, Oh 
Okay, that's one. Now, if you're trying to push from behind, there's actually a little flange on the mounted bar, which sort of keeps, I guess, this rubber thing from sliding farther up. But if you get your lever behind that, now you're not pushing on the rubber, you're pushing on this steel ring on that's attached to the thing, so you're not going to get anywhere. So just be mindful of that. You're behind it, you're on, on the rubber itself. Yeah, there's no way to make this work. Well, there is a way, but I'm not sure what it is. This one's actually, I hope, a little bit easier because it's, there's more stuff here to leverage against. I think that was actually my original idea three hours ago. A little more oil wouldn't hurt. I think I'm almost there. Speaking of which, let's make sure the blocks are underneath the thing so it catches it. When it does let go. tip of one of the exhausts here so that it can't fall until we let it go you know it's oh it's on the block already so this is already longer let's see if that helps Which way is up? Okay. So, let's try it with the extension. Why not? Why do you make it harder? Give myself a few extra inches. Let's see how that feels. <laughs> Except for now, it's hard to. It's so long. It's like on top of my face. But yeah, it yeah, yeah. does work. This might not work because of the angle. But just for fun to try it. Than I thought it would actually. Oh, where's the other one here? Can I see what I'm doing? Don't need to. Worked great. Again, worked way better than I thought it would. Okay, that's one. Other side. Oh, there we go. Ow! Fuck. Ugh! Things are right at my knee. 
right behind the fucking kneecap. You know what that means? Right behind the fucking kneecap. Oh, that's sensitive. It's sort of like a funny bone thing, but not funny. Let me see what I'm looking at here. Yeah, I got it. Perfect. I don't think I have anything longer actually than this. But this is like two feet long. If you need more than that, it yeah. might be a better way to do it. I can move it. That's why we undid it. So we can move it. And I can push this plastic out of the way. I think. Sort of. Literally, I'm doing it from the uh, little cutout for the muffler on the exhaust tips. And it's working because I got those little, that little angle of uh, the smaller angle helps. It makes a big difference in this case. I've got the two foot extension. Extended, I mean, all the way. It's not an extension. It's, it's only just an extendable right there. This way. Okay. So let's see if I can use a speaker wrench there so I don't have to do this forever. So because it's all underneath, this is working for me. Is this loose enough now? Yeah, it's fine. And I'm going to try the same with this technique here. You want to push with the handle on the back. And then of course you crank it. See if I think that's enough. Yeah, that's funny. Two. Okay, that was three. So four, I mean two. So three is install carriage bolts. Item six into the exhaust hangers on hitch. The bolt is, is hang on the hanger. I'm gonna have to take the hanger off the exhaust and then I'm gonna have to put it onto the hitch and then I bring the hitch up and reinstall it onto the exhaust pipe, yeah. The, the, the hangers have to be, the isolators, whatever they wanna call them, has to be completely free. And right now they're still in the exhaust pipe, but I, I should be able to do that. All right, so we're bringing out the hitch. It's time to start moving and get in the uh, assembly direction. Remove these two on the end here. Hopefully, now that I have a better angle, I can just push it off. That's my hope. Make sure that when it lets go, your hand doesn't like run into something sharp. edge of this stupid plastic bumper or something. Mm, what? Uh, there it goes. Okay. That was easy enough. Same for the other side. <laughs> I 
Okay. That wasn't too hard, really. Hopefully the rest will. Now, we'll move upstairs here into the bed of the truck. Here's the hitch. I'm just using the uh, truck as a workbench. I'll put the bolts and stuff in here. And then we put one of these on. One thing you can do is take all your nuts and washers out and uh, just assemble them to make sure not only do you have everything but you know which when you have things like this where there's all kinds of different sizes this is only two I think two or three sizes here but it makes it easier to figure out what goes where so it looks like these nuts are super fucked up both of them don't seem to work very good I see they're all bent up inside so I'm going to give it a try, run these things through the, to the nuts and see if I can get them to uh, work a little better. Because it just goes on like a little bit and it jams. And you can see inside the nut actually. I don't know if you can see it, but we'll try to... The, the threads are, are bent up, which is bizarre. I've never seen that before. And they both are the same. See how it's all chewed up in there? And they're both the same. They both have some problem. Like you can see, it goes down, you know, halfway maybe, and then it jams. That's exactly what's happening. Now I can see why. Because the, here's the other one. Well, uh, because it's so shitty. It's weird that they, I thought one would be okay at the effect of, you know, they make millions of these. And it happens. But they both jam in the same way. This one doesn't look as bad. There, there. It doesn't look smooth. It doesn't look great, but I guess it's bad enough. So I'm gonna try to retap these and see if I can get it to work. All right. Wish me luck. See you on the other side. Here's here's the back of the truck as the workbench setup. By the way. I got this space here, why not use it? Okay, so I did the threading. Um, and now, it's still screwed up right around here on the threads. You can actually see, well, here. It would help if I aim the camera the right place. You see the chips and stuff there. So I don't know where they got these bolts from but they're terrible both both the bolts and the nuts you can see, see the threads are all right in here to where jams and you can see it's tore up that's how it came only worse so I actually had to rethread the uh, the nut was that the camera here and uh, Cleaned it up a little bit. It, it's rough, but it's still now it works. Now it'll actually go on with this, and then I had to redo the bolt with the matching deal. I can't believe I'm actually using this thing. I've had that thing for I haven't even touched that for at least twenty or thirty years. It came from this old thing, Savon. My dad probably bought it from Savon back in the day. He maybe used it once. And it's been sitting in a drawer, complete set. Never, you know, you can't lose it if you don't open the box. That's great. Finally got the job done here. That's a miracle. 
All right, so this has to go on, but I can't do it with one hand now. My other camera battery died. Okay, forgot how to do my phone now. So the same thing here, and I already did it, but it's still super tight, but it's uh, a lot better. It actually goes on more now. It only has to go on this far because, you know, this is taking up the, the most of the room, but it wouldn't go. The, because the nut was so screw, is so screwed up. I did this on the nut, and you can just see shavings coming down. The first time I did it, this is like the third run through. I can feel it's rough. You can see how rough it is to turn, uh, but it works. I was using my wrench to help initially because I couldn't turn it at all, but this got the job done. So now it's rough. So now I just kind of like hold it to one side, pushing up kind of one side. To help cut the, th the uh, threads a little bit deeper, better. It's rough, 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 but it's better. So this should be enough to get it on. It doesn't have to go all the way on. It just has to get to the end. I'll clamp that thing on. Let's try that. Yep, it's still chewy. Yeah, it, it broke through. It's better. There we go. Now, see now, it, the, that uh, square locking head on the uh, on it tight, but I'm gonna still be able to move it. The square locking head on the on the bolt on the carriage bolt works. Maybe that one's too loose, actually. Oh, that's wrong way. <laughs> it only has to swing back and forth. It's not going to rotate. It's not going to swing back and forth. It's just going to hang. But I don't want to crush it. Okay, so that's done. Took a whole all these extra steps to make the fucking thing work. But this this made in Japan set worked for me. I still can't get over it. I've never used this thing. I'm sure my dad bought it back in the early 80s or something like that. Maybe. Maybe it's that young. And I've been, I never just never used it. Now I got an accidental threading job. Distributed by Save On Drugs Incorporated, Anaheim, California. Made in Japan. <laughs> I can't get over it. I actually needed that thing. All right, step three, four. Halfway done now. Baser and passenger side frame rail. Okay, that's this thing. Uh, this one here. And that only leaves the four left. Okay, so that's correct. This is a pretty ingenious side, actually. I have to see. So this gets threaded onto this, I believe. Is that how it works? Oh, uh, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm gonna test that fucking nut because how do I know this? I can feel it's rough going on that spring, let alone the thread. Let's make sure this works. Oh, this feels good. This, I mean, I, yeah, it feels fine. This feels normal. Okay. Last thing I need to do is get it up in there and th figure out that, oh, you know what? It's all chewed up like the other piece of junk was. Yeah, so let's test that first. If you're doing this, I recommend you test all your, your nuts and bolts first just to make sure they fit together the way they're supposed to before you get it, you know, halfway under the car and everything. Then you find out something's wrong. And then this thing, I want it sitting like that. Using reverse pull wire procedure. Leave pull wire attached. See figure two. Where's figure two? Three. One. Three. Oh, here's two up here. <laughs> two three three one that's a, <laughs> I don't know who organized this thing okay that's what they're saying so you put it in like that the bolt then the square thing align everything up pull it down to get the bolt through the hole like so it looks like this inside all right let's give it a try trying to feed this through here
I need to feed the whole wire, just the part with this thing on it. Can't see what I'm doing. Oh, maybe you can't either. I'm trying to put this bolt in here. Okay, so you get it in there. Now, part of this is blocked by, I think, something holding on the bumper. But it's not terrible. So you get that in there. You get this in there. It's just what, oh, not, not if that's in the way. I guess you want it a little bit deeper so that you can get this in the this interference. There you go. Work perfectly. And they say keep it on. So I'm going to take their advice and keep it on. What's the next step? I forgot. Oh, it's probably bring the thing up. It's a passenger side frame rail as shown. Yes, did that. With the pull wire. Lead pull wire attached. Did it. Figure two. Did it just like that. Looks great. Five. Feed pull wire through hole in bracket on passenger side. Raise hitch into position. So I need to I need blocks now to hold the hitch more or less in position. So I can uh, start this assembly deal. I hope these bolts go into the existing weld nuts. But I have the original nuts, so if I have to, I'll use those. Because these are too shitty. At least I have a bank up there. And I know those fit, obviously. They just came out of there. All right, so I need blocks to, to hold this up. So I have to set that up, and I'll come back. Okay, so now I'm, these are hand tightened, and somehow they're not. Uh, that's resting on the bump on the muffler. So the other side, as you can see from the picture, lined up good. This side just needed to be moved over a little bit, and then they lined up good. The first thing I did was feed through the uh, wire. That's why you keep it attached, by the way, so you can feed it through this new hole. Uh, now I can. Now that these two are now that these two are secured, they're hand tightened all the way up. Everything. The other two are also hand tightened, just to make sure I had room to maneuver. And if I had to, you know, I didn't want to clamp down tight. Uh, but now that the four are, are are in position, I can uh, put this fifth one on, and then I can start to torque it down. Tighten and then torque, and then I guess I'm almost done. Unbelievably, after all that re-threading and bullshit, looks like I'm gonna get inside before dark. <laughs> I can't believe this took like six hours. Ridiculous. Well, I took a break though. That's not fair entirely. You want to fall off? There 
goes. I can go more, that's good. Okay, that's the middle. That's actually pretty good, I got a thing. Okay. Fantastic. I don't know why that was easy on that side. Maybe they're hanging different. I mean, the uh, one's hanging lower than the other. I don't understand. All right. Well, hopefully, you got all that. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> So I'm going to try spraying that um, with some lubricant there to get it nice and uh, conducive. do this with one hand so I'll have to check in when I'm done. Okay. Okay, I uh, forgot to tighten that last nut to the its own specific torque to the 75 pounds of the extension and then and the uh, socket of course. So let's start with what this is supposed to be at 75 on this type you want to do this security clip and then rotate this to 75 or whatever in my case 75 here there's a little arrow and then you clamp it uh, snap it shut to uh, secure that now we're ready to go attach my socket Extension. And as you can see, I'm using the wood panel again to protect the tool so I can just lay it on the ground and think about how oh, it's bouncing off the side by cement again. Uh, you know, that's not very nice. Just thinking that since I used the extension and the uh, universal joint, the torque is probably not 100% accurate, but it probably doesn't have to be, just close enough. Let's 
give it a little extra a little extra love there but I, I wanted this last one to be a lot closer to accurate because I knew that was off at least uh, five pounds so that worked out great so now we're done by the way I did hang everything in case you were worried about that so there's the uh, hanger So I got them both. I did use this thing, a piece of paper, and it worked. I can say that for sure. This is on there solid as hell. That's good. So it did work. Uh, I towed. I got everything done. I ha when you buy this thing, by the way, it, you don't get everything you need. You also need something to go inside here. They don't sell you that. That's separate, which is something like this. So not only do you have to buy that bracket, you got to buy or that, you know, hitch assembly thing. You have to buy the ball because they don't know what size you might want and they're not going to give it to you for free. And since you don't have this thing, you don't need a pin. So they don't give you that either. They give you, you have to buy that as a separate deal. And I guess you don't get this with this because sometimes you might just be buying an extra ball and for some reason you already have a pin. So if you want to start from scratch like I did, I don't even have anything. You have to buy everything, and they're all separate things. This doesn't come as a kit or anything like that. The only thing they came together was, you know, the three possibles, and this is the one I use. You can see the paint's all ripped off. But it did work. Uh, you know, it felt weird towing because I wasn't used to it. But it got the job done. As far as that goes, I can't complain. Uh, nothing broke. Everything stayed on. That's the hitch story. Let's wrap, you know, let's wrap up the hitch story now. Next is going to be, what did I tow? Well, that's a whole other video. That's kind of a shop video. Let's talk about that a little bit later. It's <laughs> my own shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I almost had an accident myself. <laughs> <laughs>